Hello, and welcome to Sean Ruins Fitness. I'm here with Dan. Hello. And I'm the owner of JRT Fit and J Range Training. I'm also a fellow of the National Board of Fitness Examiners. And we like to talk about things as to whether or not things that are being taught in the industry are good. Or not. Or not. And this is kind of a fun setup. Dan has no idea at all what we're going to talk about before we get in front of the camera. Uh, I'm not sure he knows what we're talking about while we're in front of the camera. I, have, I don't even know about half the things when I'm talking to people. Well, it's like I'm <laughs> well by the end of the podcast, do you know what we're doing by that podcast? point? What? Yeah, we're doing podcast. Yeah, there's people that will be watching right now cool. over there. Nice. And so you can wave at them and say, hi. Hi. <laughs> so... <laughs> We'll, we'll see if he picks it up, you know, by the end of this. So we're going to talk today about gluten and gluten intolerance. And this is a very big topic. So we're going to basically ask the question, is there such a thing as gluten intolerance? And if so, what does that mean? And what does that mean for the people? And what else could it be if there's not? Okay, have you heard of that before, gluten intolerance? You know what I'm, I have. I hear people going, oh, I can't have gluten or, you know, there is gluten in this and some gluten-free recipes and places that serve gluten-free meals. Yep. I have, I think it's wheat. Okay. Well, uh, wheat, uh, gluten is a protein in wheat. Right. So. I mean, when um, I grew up, gluten wasn't pronounced the same way. It was pronounced glutton. <laughs> But gluten, I mean, it's, it's true. 60s and early 70s, you know, that's how it was. But um, only recently I started hearing people say, oh, I can't have gluten or like that. And I'm like, I, I don't get it. Well, you could have a, a couple of arguments there. Number one, it could be that we were bad at diagnosing things back then. And people could have had an issue and they didn't know they had an issue and they couldn't figure it out. And they just lived with their pain or whatever else that they were going through. So that is a possibility. Yeah. I lived uh, with my pain for 25 years. Yeah, and yeah. And then you divorced her? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I'm poor. Hey, I knew I'll do two shows a week. Totally knew where you were going well, with that. <laughs> Let him along. So, yeah, the, the other possibility is that there's something else that's causing it. Now, the, but it is important to note, gluten is an amino acid. It's a protein. It's, it's part of wheat, but it's a... It's an amino acid that's in wheat. It's also an amino acid that's in corn, but the corn gluten uh, actually absorbs in a different spot than the actual wheat gluten. So the question is, Interesting. is there any truth to gluten intolerance? So the first step is, is what's gluten intolerance? Well, when you eat something and you get generally aggravated, your stomach, it hurts, you start to swell, things like that. And you build up a lot of gases, then someone will say, well, you know what? I think I may have gluten intolerance. Or they'll take away gluten, they'll stop eating it, and they'll say they feel a lot better, therefore they must have had a gluten intolerance. Kind of like and lactose intolerance? Kind of like lactose intolerance, yeah, exactly, really which we, we will cover that in another podcast. I plan on okay. covering lactose intolerance as well as okay. milk consumption and whether that's good or not. And in this one, though, we're going to keep on track with gluten. So... There is something called celiac disease. Have you heard of celiac you know, disease? I have. I have heard of it. Truth is, I don't remember what it is, but yes, I've heard of it. Okay. Uh, celiac disease is essentially a scarring in the actual ileum of the intestines. So what's the ileum? You have three segments of your small intestine. So right after your stomach is a section called your duodenum. And then after that is your duodenum. And then after that is your ileum. And the ileum is before your large intestine, otherwise called your colon. Does that give you a better picture? I've got visuals all the way. Perfect. So when there's a scar in the ileum itself, right where gluten absorbs How would you that. scar there though? Well, that's a great question. And that's something that we don't know all the reasons for. There are a lot of guesses as to Could why that like is. Acid, acid reaching it from your stomach? Or? 
Not likely, no. It's going to be from something else that we've probably consumed that destroyed it or if there could be a genetic defect that created a scar instead of... I don't believe the genetic as much as what we're actually consuming. You say you don't believe in genetic defects and you're sitting next to me? <laughs> I didn't say I don't, I don't believe in genetic <laughs> defects. You are a principal example of that, but I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying for this specific case, I don't think that that's one of the main issues there. I think that it's something that we have created from what we eat. Yeah. And I think one of the biggest possibilities from that is from eating uh, glyphosates, which is uh, basically the Monsanto herbicide that they they make for all their GMO crops. Monsanto. Oof. There's a ball <laughs> game that needs to be put out to <laughs> and yeah and and i i have to kind of agree with you on that one and i i hope that no one from on or if, if monsanto's well, watching this i'd love to talk to you about your company opinion. but oh, <laughs> my opinion my my yeah. opinion of monsanto is i've seen a lot of i've seen a lot of shady things go on in business Yep. But there seems to be a lot more going on with that business that at least makes the public realm mm -hmm. than, than a lot of other businesses. And they have over 10,000 seed patents on life, which is strange um, that you can even do that. And then a bird picks up the seed and goes, drops it on some farmer's land. And then, and then the farmer has no idea that it's there. And then Monsanto says, we're going to check your crops for GMO. And the farmer thinks, I've been using the same seeds forever. So I know there's no genetically modified crops on my fields. They find the one plant that they knew was there because they know what it looks like. And then they make them throw all of their seeds away. You see, that's, that's not and right. And that, it's not right. I mean, throughout history, it's heirloom seeds, all birds gone. Birds have always picked up animals, yep. elephants, every animal. It they, questions the ethics. I question the ethics of that. Yeah, and because, it gets dropped and it grows. Yeah, it, it's essentially setting them up for failure and knowing that their ignorance is basically, yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's bad. It is, it, it is. Down to greed. It is. So I, there's a huge push too with the GMO stuff as far as, and we're going to do another podcast that talks about food labeling because there's like the non-GMO sure. project, you have the organic labeling and all those actually, that. yeah, that is going to be a very important topic because there's a lot of confusion when it comes to the labeling, what that means and if it's good or bad or ugly or anything like that. So Sweet. that's going to be, that's going to be a whole nother topic. But as far as the actual uh, crops go with the Monsanto uh, and that actual glyphosate, it's almost everywhere. It's really hard to get away from glyphosates because of the drift and everything with the wind and everything the like that. Glyphosates are... Glyphosate is, if you get Roundup... Roundup, yep. That big and you spray that, you're spraying glyphosates all over. Okay, right. Okay. Yeah, I see that on the TV all the time. Have you haven't been in right. you know, contact with this? Blah, 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 blah. Sure. And the... And they still use it. It's... Uh, they basically genetically modify a an organism in order to make it so that it has to have that uh ke chemical in order to live so it, they have to spray it or their plant won't live mm. very interesting right but that's a unique angle then they claim that it doesn't cause any effects on us however we have noticed in studies that it actually will change the genetic makeup or, or of an actual bacteria that's inside of us, which they have at first claim that it doesn't do, which means that our bacteria, our friendly bacteria that's in our gut changes. And that's not a good thing. Hmm. And we don't, uh, it, it's likely not a good thing, but it's, uh, I would also beg to say that you have these little, we'll call them herbicides and pesticides that end up going through the digestive tract and then absorbing in different areas. But it'll, it'll absorb along with whatever you're absorbing. Like if you're absorbing that gluten, for example, there could be a little pesticide connected to that or an herbicide. And that actually can disrupt. So you got a remora. A what? A remora. It's, it attaches itself to it. Yeah. And goes with it. Remora, yeah. It's a fish that attaches to sharks. Sure. Sure. Cares. Yeah. It's like a, yeah. And that would be a symbiotic relationship with the, between those Somewhat, two, but yeah. I, it would be, and I'm sure it helps the shark in some way as well. Mm, well it might be. Uh, but with the, with this, it's, it actually probably will disrupt the actual portion of the intestine that you actually absorb it in. And I say probably, because I don't think they're, 
you know, there's there's not a lot of research done on this, and I'm sure that companies like Mon Monsanto or DuPont they'll probably squash as much research as possible in order no. to make sure that there's that. no research. No, of course no. not. They wouldn't pay for it. That's for sure. No, it would ruin their but <laughs> ruin their bottom line. That's what it's all yeah, about. Yeah. Which I have no problem with profits if I, they're I ethical like profits. If they're ethical and profits, then, that's that's completely okay. But greed has become a disease. Right. So the likelihood is is that we did cause the scarring from something like that that makes sense uh, we have done studies that have shown that someone's gut can become what's called hyperpermeable so uh, create hyperpermeability which means that they essentially open too much the the linings we'll call it swells up and then makes it so that bacteria and things like that can get through a little bit easier into our blood so that's not a good thing and it's likely that things like that are what causes that. Is there anything definitive at this point? No. I can't say that I've read anything that's definitive, but it logically makes sense. When we're putting chemicals in that we're not really supposed to consume, that that would disrupt the natural order of what is supposed to happen within our actual intestinal tract. Well, some things you just should have enough. I mean, common sense is not common, but you look <laughs> at things and you go, no, I'm not going to eat that. Right. Absolutely. But there are people that just go... Yeah, would you eat Roundup if you... Had it in front of you? I, I, I don't eat certain things I see in restaurants. <laughs> Monsanto claims that you can consume that and it's perfectly safe. But Let's you know what's the funny? President of the company well, someone's actually, well, actually one of the their representatives has been offered a glass of Monsanto and said, oh, if it's safe, go ahead. And, and his response was, what do you think, I'm stupid? Obviously <laughs> the answer there is yes. I mean, if it's your product. <laughs> yeah, if you're claiming that it's perfectly safe then, to drink then, and you don't drink it, I'm thinking it's not perfectly safe to drink. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a pretty safe assumption there. That, yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's pathetic. Yeah, I would agree with that. So, all right. So off tra topic there just a little bit, but going into the probable causes of this celiac disease, I believe that that's probably one of the main ones. And obviously, if there's any research that's out there, I'd love to see it that actually uh, either supports or goes against what I just explained. Mm -hmm. And the other thing with gluten is if you don't have celiac disease, could there be a possibility that you are allergic to it? To gluten? To gluten itself. I would say that there is a possibility. However, it's not very likely that you have an actual allergy to a protein, to an amino acid. You have much fewer allergies to amino acids than you do anything else. Like someone could actually be allergic to wheat, for example. And True. that could definitely cause problems. Uh, without actually being gluten intolerant, without actually having celiac disease. But that doesn't mean, you know, that, that it's the gluten itself. That's what I'm trying to say, is sure. it could be something I mean, else. People have allergies to everything. I mean, you see people with shellfish allergies. Sure. You see, I mean, there were a dime a dozen. Absolutely. Peanuts, you know, all these different things. One yep. day they're, but with peanuts, one day they were allergic. And I've seen people go, you know, last year I couldn't eat a peanut without getting sick, and now I can eat them all the time. You've known people like that? Yes. Really? Yes. Interesting. She had her, her son who did this, and he could not eat a peanut, and I don't know what so happened. So why would they feed him a peanut? <laughs> well, they found out the hard way. You know, he ate some peanuts or whatnot, and peanut butter, and kid blew up, and bananas. No, I'm saying after they found out that he was allergic, why would I they... I think he was accidentally ingesting some peanuts. Oh, okay. He just didn't realize it. Yeah. And then suddenly went, wait a minute, those peanuts, waiting for reaction time, waiting for... Had his happy pen ready and everything. And, and nothing happened. Interesting. You know, because I know bananas. I have a very good friend of mine. If he eats a banana, he swells up. Throat, tongue, and he goes to the emergency room. Really? Thought, hmm. Odd. What type of bananas, I wonder? Yellow ones. Yeah. Not the green ones? No, no. Not the, the orange, type, blue? No, just... Yellow one. Bananas. Oh my gosh. I meant by oh. that organic. I, I, no, I, not no, this guy. Conventionally grown. No, this guy, he grew up in the 60s and 70s. No, do, you know, do you know how to tell if, uh, when you're buying produce, do you know how to tell if that produce is actually organic or conventionally grown yeah, just based on. There's a sticker on it. Well, besides the sticker, what if, if there aren't any stickers that say organic? 
You can tell by nothing. the SKU number, the SKU number. Oh, yeah, it has an extra number. Like if it's 9087, it would be like 49807. There's an extra number on the front. So we'll take bananas, which is uh, 4011, I believe, is the what? SKU. Really? Yeah. And That's so the, the 4011 is conventionally grown, which means that they actually use the conventional ideas with pesticides, herbicides, whatever they had to use. Mm -hmm. And if it has a 94011, then that's organically grown. And you know, I did know that now that you say that. And then an 84011. That means that would be sure. genetically modified. Really? Which we don't see in our grocery stores because I'd. On they're actually afraid that if they made them or produced them, that people wouldn't eat them, which I would agree with. I think less people would eat them. Well, I don't have much problem with eating things, obviously. No, but a genetically modified banana. Would you eat that? Yeah. You would? Sure. We need to do a podcast about that. Why yeah. would you eat a genetically modified banana? Same as a monkey would. You know, you steal it, <laughs> eat it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so you don't rum and a daiquiri. So you don't know better, is what you're saying. Bottom line, no. Truthfully, okay, I, and that's I okay. Don't. Let's. And I mean, but a banana to me is. I've been eating those since the early '60s. Well, that that could be another podcast talking more in depth about what the difference is between all of that. Well, maybe we'll couple that with the uh, labeling stuff. Yeah, I agree. That sounds because pretty I'm, good to me. To be honest with you, a lot of guys that are older than me. You hand them a banana, they're not going to say, is this a GMO? Is this organic? <laughs> they're going to look at me and go, shut up and eat the banana. <laughs> or you're going to be wearing it. You know, no. <laughs> I'd rather wear a genetically modified banana than to <laughs> consume it, to be honest. <laughs> but that could be another talk. So we're talking about gluten. Let's go back to gluten. So yeah. if someone doesn't have a weed allergy, if someone doesn't have celiac disease, and I'm going to say the small percentage of people who have potentially a, an allergy to actual gluten, if someone doesn't have any of that, there is no such thing as gluten intolerance. Really? Really. Very interesting. According to the research, there's no such thing as gluten intolerance outside of celiac disease and everything else. However, I think that people who eat or who used to eat, more appropriately, the different foods that actually cause the reactions that they're attempting to stay away from, mm -hmm. those were more processed garbage foods. They were really terrible for you. And then they started eating more whole foods that actually had like one to three ingredients, like foods are supposed to. And then they start feeling better. And I think a, a lot of the genetic, the not genetic, a lot of the gluten-free foods actually have, a little bit healthier ingredients for the most part, not in every case. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell you what one of the causes is that I believe that I've noticed with my clients who have come to me and said, oh, I have a gluten intolerance. And I tell them, no, you don't. But, you know, nicer. I'm a little nicer. I don't just straight out say that. I actually have a bedside manner. But <laughs> what? No, it wasn't me. I did not say anything. You what? You don't what? What? You don't think what? I have a bet? Oh. Shut the front door. I'm going to go now. <laughs> I can't leave my podcast, can I? Yeah, go on, get the hell out of here. <laughs> I'm going to be taking Might be a lot more interesting. <laughs> all of his stuff. <laughs> You're going to call it Dan Ruins All of My Stuff? Yeah. Dan no, ruins no, all of Sean there. Ruins Fitness Stuff? Is yeah, that, that That's yeah. a long title. I, yeah, it's, uh, it's, I guarantee you it's... The domain's available, so. <laughs> For five dollars, we sell it to you. So, <laughs> anywho, so I think that the culprit, a lot of the time, not every time, but a lot of the time, other than the Monsanto stuff, because I think that can actually cause inflammation and everything else as well that causes people's negative effects, is unfermented soy unfermented soy correct okay uh, i i mean i'm i know what soy is what is soy we're talking like soy sauce like soy sauce is fermented soy with usually a lot of salt in it very heavy salt i agree it's what uh, japanese or yeah i mean it's yeah it's 
Asian, a lot of yeah. Chinese, Japanese use it. Right. And I mean, it's, I would say Koreans use it. I'd right. say most Asian foods have it. I'm know. not sure about Indian. That's Korean Asian there. as well, but yeah. I don't know if they but use it. But either way, I mean, unfermented soy. I'm not familiar. That's, that's okay. That's a brand new thing to me. Yeah. So tofu would be unfermented soy. Tofu. I like tofu. Miso would be fermented soy. Does that make sense? Um, miso the difference like between as that? Miso soup? Yes, absolutely. Miso. Okay. Oh, and I love that too. <laughs> That's very salty as well. True. I think he likes salt. I do, but I watch. You have a salt, salt addiction, less. don't you? I do. I really do. Yeah. I yeah. But when you get high blood pressure, you learn to not add salt to anything. Yep. I don't have salt. And if you have papers. pots, you learn that you have to add salt to everything. If you have what? Pots. Pots. Yeah. Okay. So it's uh, post tachycardia. Uh, no, post orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. No, that was a mouthful. Yeah, <laughs> because I don't. They generally salt. tell you to eat about fourteen thousand milligrams really? of sodium when well, you have a little bit much when you have pots. But actually, helps because they have really low blood pressure, so they need to increase it, and that's one. I don't add do salt to anything. If someone comes, but in if you have high blood pressure, like most people, then you yeah. need to. Yeah, I don't add salt if they want salt to their food. Yeah, but you eat a lot of miso soup and a lot of soy sauce. So Actually, I mean, come on, seldomly, come on, dude. When I go out to eat, which isn't often, maybe once every two, three weeks, I'll get out. It's always an Asian place. Always and an Asian place? 99% of the time it's Asian. Interesting. It's either Vietnamese or, I don't do Chinese, Vietnamese, um, Thai, um, Japanese I like. I don't do Chinese because it's just too much salt in it. Hmm. But I order the uh, the miso soup. With a the lot of the Chinese meat. food is fried too, and that ends uh, up being yeah, and it's matter of what they fry it in as well. But they have the fried yeah. rice. People like the fried rice and the true. And I go more on those chicken. spring roll stuff, you know. Do they spring rolls, not the summer fresh, rolls. Yeah, yeah, not the deep fried. Not the fried. Yeah, I can't deal with that. I like right. the fresh stuff. But and with but that, you're addicted do, to salt. Yes, I am. Okay, and sugar. So it's hard for you to keep away from. No, I just learned to not add it to stuff. And How do you do that? Just don't have it available. Simply. Oh, you just don't buy it. I just don't buy it. Do you walk by it at the store? Make sure to avoid it. No, I even read the labels on it where it says sodium. Oh, okay. And if it, so you're like, like, I want this, but uh, you, it's too much sodium. It's not worth and it. Look to you. Cholesterol. Look at all this. No, this is garbage. That's, boom. That's good. Boom. That's actually very hard to come to that actual conclusion. So that's that's well, fantastic. You, know, you get a little older, you start looking a little more, and I find that the food you eat during the day affects your mood throughout the day. Yes, so and we are going to rip apart what he eats. He actually eats fairly well, but there's a reason. Off the place, but yeah, no, and we're going to help you. You have a goal. What's your goal? What's my goal right now? Yeah. Uh, Weight-wise or sure. food-wise? Sure, whatever. Well, I'd like to, honestly, I'd like to knock off maybe 60 pounds. Okay. Maybe more. I'd like to do that. Yes, I would. Let's help him do that. That'll be fun. Yes, That'll be fun please. to follow him do that. Right. So. <laughs> if you can come and bring your pit bull, have him chase me. <laughs> Running, I hear, is good. I run out of necessity, so if a dog is chasing, I will run. I don't run. That's a thing that cavemen did out of necessity. Something's chasing dinosaur. Oh, I thought oh, we were oh. going to get through a podcast without you mentioning cavemen. I thought I we would. We were. <laughs> All right, back to the we floor. had this talk. We did. We oh, talking. my gosh. He just goes back to it. Caveman, caveman, caveman. 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 Okay, uh, get it out of your system. Get it out. Come on. Right, get it out of right. your system. It's all done. <laughs> so talking about soy, unfermented soy, soybean oil. Soy is actually something that the U.S. government actually subsidizes. So do you know what that means? I mean, they pay them to grow it. Basically, yes. So they make it a lot cheaper for them to, to be able to grow it. So they make a higher profit margin. So it's something True. that... But that the Chinese, not to interrupt you, I did, but the Chinese, <laughs> the last part of last year, 2018, brought in absolutely zero soy from the U.S. means. Yeah? Due to the tariffs that sure. the president has put against them. Right. And you know what? They still sold all the soy. Other companies picked that up. So the Which... Chinese didn't get it. Oh, <laughs> yes, they had a, gl a, glut a glutton, glutton of it <laughs> on the market. A, yeah. There's a lot of it available. And they flipped it to other countries. Yeah. And so soy is a big product. And I think because we subsidize it, that's why it's, it's not just cheap for the farmers, but it's cheap for the manufacturers to purchase soy products in order to actually make their products. So if they have a choice between a better oil 
and soybean oil, guess, I mean, they're going to go off a of price a lot of the time. So they're going to say, oh, well, the soybean oil will change, you know, even if they save 10 cents per whatever they're making, that's 10 cents times a million. That's a huge difference. Truly. So I think that's one of the reasons why it's so prominent. But soy, soybean oil specifically has been shown to actually be very inflammatory in our system. So if we actually use soybean oil at all, it actually will inflame us. It's, it has an inf uh, part of the inflammatory factor. No it's, it's, yeah. I did not know that. And so that is not a good thing by itself. And you also have all this little basically emulsifier that they use called soy lycothin. Okay. I'm sure you've seen that in an ingredient if you yes, yes. read the ingredient list often. And that is in so many cheap products because it's a cheap one. It's something that they can buy super cheap and it does exactly what they're trying to do with it. So a lot of the times I've noticed that, well, I'll go through what my clients would eat and, and I'll go through what they ate previously, what caused them issues, and I'll point out to them, well, this has soybean oil in it, or you know, one form or another Could of the be soy. The problem. And it's very interesting. They're like, wow, I didn't realize that. And just recently, I was actually talking to a client about this place that sold gluten free pizza crust that she had been to. And I've seen And so too. I decided to ask this place. May I see your ingredient list for the gluten-free pizza crust? And they're like, wait, what? Why would you want to do that? It doesn't have gluten in it. You know, they just assume that that's all that people care about. Product knowledge for me. And so, and they were nice and they let me see it and everything. And I think most of the time they will, but it just kind of takes a little while for them to find it because it's not readily available if they've already thrown the label away. They have to think of what the brand was and look that up. But in this case, I remember the brand, looked it up, came back to me 10 minutes later and... They shared with me the gluten-free is rice flour and then soybean oil. Rice flour? Yeah. You mean two separate items, rice yep. and flour? No, rice flour. Rice one, flour. One item. One, okay. Yeah. So they rice. make, they basically, and they I don't know how they do it, rice. but yeah, they ter make the flour out of the rice. Kind of the same yeah, as like a rice spaghetti or something like that. I'm sure. Yeah. Converted. I don't know how they do it exactly. But logically, that sounds. And yeah. then soybean oil, which as you stated, could create, could cause inflammation. Absolutely. There were some other ingredients in there. None of them seemed to be ones that would actually cause issues. But, but I found that interesting that the place that the lady who was telling me that she had uh, their gluten-free crust that actually had problems with eating there had soybean oil in it. And I told her that I think it's soy, not gluten, because she doesn't have celiac disease. And you, how do you know that? She was tested. You can do a blood test for it. Get out of here, really. Yeah. You want me to get out of here? Okay. I do. I'm this is the second, second time you've asked That's me to get out of here. Time, <laughs> Sometimes I don't feel loved. <sighs> what? What? Did you what? Nothing. Okay. I'm, I, you know I'm going to watch this later, right? <laughs> I'm going to know what you said. I take it all back. <laughs> Are you telling me over there now? Yeah, in the I'm third person. You're like, this is right. like back to the future. Okay. Later when you watch this. I got gotcha. you. That sounds kind of little, a little awkward. I'm a little confused. That's okay. We'll keep moving on. It's what? what? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so I actually asked that specific client to, to put together a list for me of different foods that she can eat and not eat that all are labeled gluten-free, especially the ones that she goes to restaurants and things like that. So she's putting that list together as we speak. And that's going to be very interesting uh, to actually go through that. I will contact all of them and actually figure out, you know, basically if there's any association that I can grasp here on whether or not it's actually something else or could be something else in this case that's actually in there. And then, of course, we'll do other tests because she said she also said something that she can go to other countries and it's fine. And I've heard that before, like she can eat breads from other countries and she has no problem at all. So that, and they still use gluten over there. So it's not, to me, it can't be that. It has to be something else in That's these an cases. Interesting thing. I mean, right. And how come we never really heard much about gluten like when I was growing up? I mean, uh, well, like we talked about, it could be something that, that we just didn't know about. I mean, it's a protein. Now, we, we've hybridized the wheat quite a bit since then, and, and yeah. they've changed it because of the hybridization of it. They only recently started actually genetically modifying the, the wheat, and I'm not sure if they've, 
yeah, I haven't seen any in the store that's been genetically modified, but I also don't buy that type of stuff or purposely look for it. Okay. But yes, uh, that can change the structure of that. So there could be uh, something to do with that. And I know that Dr. Perlmutter wrote a book talking about that with wheat belly, which I completely disagree with some of the premise of Dr. Perlmutter, what he says about certain things while agreeing with some of the other stuff that he talks about and love to talk with him about other things pertaining to wheat and things of that nature. But anywho, that's a different topic. Talk back to where we different were. Different day, back to where we were. Soy. Right. <laughs> so is, is that interesting to you that it could be I, something? You know, I, I do like um, tofu. I know it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I grew up with a mom that was a hippie. <laughs> and so tofu was something that she didn't really have much around at first, but once she started, realized you know you add you know flavor to the tofu mm -hmm. like um, uh, ponzu. It's a pon ponzu. P o n z u. It's like ponzu? a ponzu uh, teriyaki type sauce. And if mm. you put your so, your um, ponzu, your, maybe um, tofu in it, and then put it on a pan, it absorbs that flavor. Hmm. And so then I would make all my Asian. Um, veggies, which are usually just a quick slam of steaming them, put them on a real hot pan, put that in there, and I add that for the protein, and I like it. Mm -hmm. um, I became more into that after I moved out than when I lived at home, right. and I started testing things that suited me. And to this day, I mean, I do like um, um, tofu, and I dice it up, and I add it to my Asian food. So are you Asian willing? Being just strictly... Steamed veggies. You don't have any stomach issues or anything like that, Does though. Does it look like normally? I have stomach issues? <laughs> <laughs> From Other a visual perspective? Big, or Other than it's too big, I have no problem eating most things. Okay. I choose not to eat certain things. And I'll look at it and go, ew. Now, know? I would recommend, just based on the inflammatory factor of soy, that you choose not to eat tofu more often than eat tofu. And it's not like I eat it every day. If Good. I plan on doing, like... This week I'm going to do salad, you know, or that week I'm going to do, you know, you, you have four, six pork chops. Well, I'm not going to let them go to waste. They were frozen. I, I Eat all six of those at a time. Well, you know, over the week I break them up and, you know, have one here, one there. Right. And truly I will make one for the dog because he deserves it. <laughs> True. I mean, he's, he's mostly human. He's mostly human. He really is, you know, and he's big and well, it's, it's, it's my boy. It's your boy, so, so you make him feed a, him a I, pork chop. I do. I dice it up. I, you know, I give it to him. But um, no, I, I don't mind um, tofu. Okay. I like the miso soup, and I will make miso soup. I pick it up from Whole Foods or now That's whoever. extremely salty, too. So I, it is. Yeah. I water it down heavily. Yeah. And, and I think, give it to I think you, a lot I of I, – I don't eat a lot of tofu, but I think tofu is pretty salty as well. It, yeah. I, I don't know. I'd have to look at it. But. About 50% of the water. So if I'm using one cup of soup – there's one cup of water. Gotcha. And then I spread it out a little bit. It, you know, yeah. put it in the pan, let it shrink right. a little bit, and some tofu, and um, you know, or I add it to my veggies. So, do you eat edamames? Speaking of you know, veggies, I really don't care for them. I will, but I don't care. for Do you know what them. that is? Yeah, it's the beans, soybeans. Yeah, and I, I know what they are. And I know a lot of people are big. Ooh, they're so tasty. <laughs> Break them open and eat them. Eh, my dog likes them. I find them. I give them to my dog. <laughs> you. Really. You find them. I'm curious about right. this. You now, go and search I've around had, and pick them out of the... Well, I, I ate... A friend of mine took me out to P.F. Chang's. Oh, okay. And we had some... Isn't that a Chinese place? Uh, it is. And, and you don't go to Chinese places. I don't, but, you know, when someone says, hey, I'm taking you out to lunch, you're going... <laughs> what, wherever we go, you, you're right. Sure, sure. So we went, and I had the fried rice, and there was a lot left over, and I went home, and the next day <clears> I had the half cup of rice, and I picked through it, and Einstein, that's my dog. And I just kept flipping him the beans, and he just sat there going, good, I'll eat it, I'll eat it, I'll eat it. He's a, <laughs> he's a garbage disposal. Well, most dogs will eat just about anything you feed it. He's a 150-pound garbage disposal on on legs. I actually know a dog that'll eat spinach if you're eating a spinach salad. Really? And just chuck a nice leaf of spinach at it yeah. and just gobble it up like it's the oh. best thing ever, even without dressing on it, just the spinach by itself. My dog eats everything it's I flip bizarre. Out. I've never seen that. This is a tomato... Well, yeah, those Olives. all have sugars in them and juices. So, I mean, I can see eat. that, but a spinach? It, my dog is like <laughs> will, a Will your dog eat legs. spinach? 
Why not? I'm going to go find out. Well, good. Let me know. I'm I'll actually video curious. <laughs> Videotape it sounds good. I'd love I mean, to see it. Goose poop. It's green too. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's... Green is green, right? Yeah. I'll videotape I doubt that's what he's thinking, but <laughs> don't videotape that. I don't want to see that. Okay. Yeah, thank but you. But the spinach, I'm going to find out now because I am going to do salad today. And So I'm going to challenge you not to eat unfermented soy because I think it's terrible for you. Unfermented soy. In other words, drop the tofu, drop the miso. No, the miso is fermented, but I'm still going to ask that you don't do that because of sodium. Okay. Soups, and I'm okay with that soups in general, you have a lot of sodium in them. Even True. though low-sodium soups have quite a bit of sodium in them. Even and tomato soup is that way. Yeah, if you eat, I mean, if you make it yourself, that's one thing. If Because I actually make this tremendously healthy soup that's more vegetables than anything else. And then it yeah. says to add four thing, you know, quarts or whatever it is of like a ton of the actual broth. Like... Chicken and I or... use a quarter of what they actually say. And I don't even add extra water. It's just barely any soup there to it. It's mostly vegetables. But... And I make my soup like that. I do make it, you know, when it's a lot of, it's like one of those little containers. Yeah, if you eat it, those, and that's good. That's, that's better. They use the low sodium. Yeah. Dump that in. My chicken, my carrots, my celery. Yeah. My onions, my this, my that. Put it on the, the burner on the, my crock pot. Yes. For what? Six hours on low. So cool. Very low. Nice cook. Very yeah. slow. Right. I put it, boom, I walk away. Nice. That sounds good. Turn around. And that sounds I good. I think the worst part that I get with it is um, a piece of buttered bread with my soup. Buttered bread. That's with gluten. And I know. And so let's let's go back to gluten because we, we've well, kind of, yeah. Off, yeah. And, and it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> so the corn gluten. I mentioned that really quickly, that corn gluten does not actually impact someone with celiac disease. And there have been studies on that that show that, which is very interesting because when you have like a cough syrup that says gluten-free cough syrup, the cough syrup that uses gluten will use the corn gluten. So it actually won't affect anyone corn that actually gluten. has that. Yeah, See, It just absorbs in a different spot from that. It's just a protein. It's part of the, it's a protein that's in corn. Corn is a grain. Just like wheat is a grain, and they both have gluten amino acid, but it's it actually is slightly different where it actually absorbs a little bit differently. Now, of course, the corn that we have now is massive compared to the corn that we started with. A corn kernel was more like the size of rice back a long time ago. Right, you know, things are, so, as you said, modified. It, that wasn't modified. That's still hybridized. Do you know the difference between modified and hybridized? I do. We live okay. in a state in Colorado where... A lot of things are hybridized. <laughs> Try to figure that one. We're in Colorado five years legal. A lot of things are hybridized. Corn being not as popular as the other one I'm thinking of. Oh, my goodness. But anyway, no, I, 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 I get hybridized. I, I totally understand what you mean by things. And as they get hybridized, they get bigger well that's what the purpose is to make it bigger so they find a bigger crop and a bigger crop and they say oh well, let's put these together and then make them bigger and then yeah. it's like it's the opposite of taking a runt of a litter and a runt of a litter and making a smaller dog true it's kind of the opposite taking the that. alpha and the alpha yeah and the, the f1s on each and boom sure and you get a boom exactly and you then know? it just keeps growing and growing and growing so, Arnold, right right so it'd be interesting if we did that with rice and made that don't do that i don't want that anyway <laughs> it could be an interesting thought I'm just wondering if that's possible with anything like that or amaranth or... Wonder if they could do this with quinoa. a cat. Cat? A cat. Yeah, I feel like... Rare. Yeah, I know what a cat is. Yeah. We're, we're good on that. This would be really cool I to have two very large cats and make one big, like, guard cat for your house instead of having a guard dog. Like a lion? Like a mountain lion? That would be so <laughs> cool, man. I'm in my house. My cat's going to eat you. Awesome. Well, didn't the house cats really come from bobcats and other things like I that? Mean, you know, Probably. Well, anyway. I mean, dogs come from wolves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, so right. I'm sure it's. I'm Imagine sure it would it probably. Yeah. Dwindle down. Yeah. In, over the times, but yeah, I would rather walk my mountain lion to the dog park. Right. Go, hey, <laughs> meow. Is that legal? I don't know, but I'd love to do that. Colorado would be oh, the I place just, that would make it legal if it's not legal. Pretty much, you want it legal in Colorado. <laughs> we'll vote on it. Yeah. <laughs> why yeah. not? I don't want to talk about because everybody's hungry here. <laughs> Weird. I wonder why. I wonder why. <laughs> Captain Crunch. <laughs> 
So yes, and that could be another topic. I don't know, maybe in the far future, but yeah. anyways, CBD oil, things like that. That's some definite a lot of stuff on things, a lot of right now. research going on in that field. So it might be an interesting thing to talk about, but nah, not anytime soon. I don't want to get touched that right now. Well, I think in the near future, they're really going to come together being that the government has just legalized a hemp. We're not talking smokable marijuana. We're talking hemp, which would be used for the seeds, Hmm. Which would be used for the, uh, the 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 stalks themselves into rope and weavable materials. Is this genetically modified hemp or is this hybridized I hemp? I don't know. I just know hemp. Huh. Now, whether it was a GMO or a hybridized, you I don't, don't know, know. But I'm sure they'll do both in time. Sure. Because the more you can make out of the crop, you can grow a field of crop that's this yeah. big around. Yeah. You can grow a field of crop that's this big around. Sure. Which am I going to make more money with? Well, I don't know. <laughs> And that's the bottom line, once again, is can I... Depends on supply money? and demand. If enough people are like, I don't want that stuff, even if it's this big, because of other reasons, because I know that it's going to anger my friendly bacteria in my gut and it's going to end up disrupting everything else because of that, then I probably don't want that. Because I don't want to anger those gut bacteria that are supposed to make all these things for me and, and break down my food properly and things of that nature and not create things that are bad. So I don't want to create more IGF-1. And if I wanted to create more IGF-1, then I'd eat more. But that's another story. <laughs> I'm going off on a tangent, yes, aren't I? Do I do that? I angered my gut last night. <laughs> Definitely. What, how'd you do that? Two tangerine martinis on a Heineken. <laughs> is that a post- New Year's Eve celebration, or is that post? But what what day post, is it? Is it the fourth yeah. already? Yeah. First, uh, yeah. It was a post six o'clock. Whatever. <laughs> post post. No, actually, I did. I post I post, had post only one New Year's Eve because my knee was hurting, ah. and it magnified the intensity of the ibuprofen I took, so it helped my knee not hurt. Got Other it. Got it. I rarely drink because I've been in the business for a long time. Yeah, you work at McDonald's, you don't go back there for dinner. I see liquor, it's like, eh, the thrill is gone. Yes. And B.B. King said, you know what? I can drink if I choose to. I just find that it's, it's just not there for me. Yeah. But if it helps pain, make my knee stop hurting right now, I have a knee problem, which will get fixed soon. Um, it, you know, whatever it takes to make pain go away. Yep. Absolutely. I will do. And and we're going to talk about all the fixes for knee problems. That sounds like a fun yeah. other topic. A lot of people to, have knee problems from yeah. skiing like me. Yeah. Riding your we, bike and hiking and fishing. Yeah, we already and, talked about that on your you know, on the podcast. We were talking about muscle confusion. So, yeah. 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 Pain is a big Makes thing. sense. All right. Well, that's fantastic. So, we covered gluten. Soy. My theory on it is soy. We covered that there is no such thing as as gluten intolerance if you don't have celiac disease. Could there be an allergy? Sure. Are the allergy tests accurate? We didn't really talk about that. That's another story. It depends. They they actually bring up a, their own ideas. Like, you know, if they're testing milk, for example, I know that's not gluten, but they'll pick the one brand of milk. They say, oh, we picked organic milk. Well, I don't need organic milk or drink organic milk. Milk's another topic we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a huge difference between different milks, and so you have to kind of be careful on on what you're looking for with that. There's regular and there's chocolate. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Nothing else. Don't worry about the rest. Not at all what I was talking about. Surprising that you didn't catch that. Anyway. Catch hmm. what? 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 Yeah. Are we there again? What? Are Where? We recording? Where again? Damn it. There I go again. Were you, were you in the Bahamas and I say you're in Hawaii again or something Short like attention that? span. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We are recording, yes. There are people watching, probably. Cool. Maybe two or three left at this point. <laughs> at this point. If you turn it off, you don't blame me. <laughs> There's enough left. tangents on this one. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, the the interesting thing about the genetic tests is they they are cool, and that's very cool technology. And I think they can actually figure out different things, but they also graph it on saying, okay, this is an extreme allergy. This is not, uh, you know, you're not allergic to it at all because we put your blood on this. And this is a range that it's like maybe mildly. But then that range where it says it's maybe mildly is the range that everyone follows. It says, oh, well, if you eat that, you should, or you should probably stay away from it. It's like, well, but that's maybe mildly. But what are the effects? I mean, if you have right. that you're allergic to... If you to, stay away what from everything... Make, what is it... What What does the allergy 
Well, it could create something else is in the future. Or does it make your eyes water? Or well, it's usually not an allergy like that. It's usually some other thing where they'll say maybe your kidneys or liver won't work properly if you eat it or something like that. But it could be something that you're inflamed and they don't realize why you're inflamed, and it's probably because of all these different foods. Like and that's kind of what they or say, your yeah. Knees or your legs right. Get which I would say the way someone shifts from their eating to what, you know, foods that are a little more clean, so to speak, that probably is what helps instead of just staying away from certain ingredients. Mm -hmm. But the genetic tests are fantastic. I'm not saying that they're bad or anything like that. I'm just saying that they don't, they don't always tell the whole story. Number one, like they don't necessarily measure the products you're going to consume. They're not going to measure the brands you're going to consume. They're not going to, to necessarily look at every possibility within the wheat uh, realm. In other words, every single product that you could possibly eat from that or every manufacturer from that. And at the same time, there's a range, which is good, but saying that there might be a mild amount of inflammation that you should stay away from. And I'm sorry, but that's not true. That's not good enough. There are certain benefits to foods, certain foods. And I'm not saying that you get benefits from wheats, but I'm saying that there are certain benefits to certain foods that they may tell you to stay away from I understand in this. which you shouldn't stay away from it. So, but Hey, that's enough for today. Sean ruins fitness. He does. Thanks for joining us. Yay, you're <laughs> Thanks for coming as always, Dan. Uh, it's my pleasure. I enjoyed giving you trouble. Ah, you don't give me trouble at all. Yeah. I enjoy it. Good. I enjoy it. <laughs> so uh, join us next time. Once again, if you ever disagree with anything that is my opinion or Dan's opinion, then feel free to let us know. Send us a, an email. Uh, you can send me an email at Sean at JRT yep. uh, Do you I mean, want them you to email you? Yeah. If you don't, dis if you disagree with me, I'll meet you in the alley with Lou and the other guys. <laughs> we'll discuss it back there. <laughs> that sounds less was pragmatic. That, that, I don't, yeah, I'm not, I'm not feeling I'll like that's my sister. Oh, then you're in trouble. In trouble because you're going to offer your sister? Anyway. Oh, she's big. Oh. <laughs> we go to the zoo and elephants throw peanuts at her. Oh, isn't that what she said about your mom? Also. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you, it ain't pretty. <laughs> so I would absolutely love to talk to anyone that is an expert that disagrees with me. And that's great. We'll have a debate. We'll bring out the science and we'll talk science. I'll bring, you know, I'll still have Dan here and we can... You know, see what he wants to chime in with and everything else. And we're going to do some interviews as well in the future. So that'll be kind of fun as well. I have a but question on one thing. What's you your talking question? talking about those mean old acids? <laughs> was that right? Mean old acids. Was that right? What? So that's what you were saying, right? No. Oh. No. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You got to check your hearing maybe after this again. Yeah. So, yeah. Check see if it's... <laughs> Yeah, I just thought you said they were mean old acids. Like, uh, yeah, Ami amino. Amino. Yeah, amino. Ah, okay. A M I N O. A amino. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's okay. My bad. Next, next my time. Bad. That's fine. So thanks for joining us. Uh, we have fun here. So I hope you have as at least half as much fun as we have. I think that's we can't ask them to have as much fun as we have because this is yeah you can this is a lot of fun. You can ask them. You can ask them. Sure. Okay, well have as much fun. Can you have as much fun? Will you? Without Should we drinking? say will you? Would that be more proper than yeah, can you? Do it. Do it. Oh, he's well, we'll ordering come you. Over to your house. <laughs> and I'm not coming over to the house. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We will see you next time. Until then, have a great, healthy life.